So Greg, we're here uh, spraying some uh, new track work we've done on Kingsview. You know, how do you think we should select the colours that we've decided to use today? Well, the best way obviously is to go and have a look at the prototype um, and just see the colours that are there. Most of the time it's a fairly dirty, nondescript brown with a little bit of a, a bit of a rusty sort of tinge to it. I notice on a lot of lads, people use a track colour and it's just too orange or it's, a, you know, like it's a dark rusty brown or something like that. And you see it in the photos, it just, it hits you in the face straight away. It just looks so bright. So you really need a subdued colour so that it enhances the track and it doesn't actually show it up. Well, that's my opinion anyway, but it's experimentation too, you know. And uh, photographs are very telling when you've got something on a layer that's not quite right. And it shows up more in a photograph because when you look at it with your own eye on the real thing on your layout, it doesn't always pick it up as best as, you, uh, as, best as it should. Just finished doing the uh, air brushing of the uh, of the rails and the sleepers, and uh, we'll let it dry off a little bit now. And then after we have some lunch, we're going to just put a small amount of dirt and debris, and we'll probably put a few grass tufts in, uh, just to sort of break up, you know, the uniform look we've got here at the moment with just only ballast. Because in reality, you know, it was always a mixture of weeds, long grass, little piles of dirt here and there. And you'll see the transformation once we get a little bit of dry grass in there too, that'll really lift it up and it'll look just like a, a proper yard would look. Okay, we're just applying another coat of, of a bitumen effect on the road here. Originally it was just a solid color gray, but this is a type of paint called Tuscan effect that Torbman's or rather Gillux used to use but unfortunately they don't make it anymore. But the beauty of this is it's it's not a uniform colour. We've done one coat and when it dries we'll give it a second coat. So we normally do this in a crisscross action. And then down here we've just we're adding out just a little bit of dirt and a bit of variation here. And uh, we're putting in a few grass tufts just to replicate some unkept weeds that hasn't been sprayed and so on. And the, the rule is here, you never ever have an even number. You always have a, an uneven number and you randomly place them. You don't have it too symmetrical. Just use a pair of tweezers here. Place them with a drop of neat PVA. Of course the railways didn't always have a lot of resources to clean up the areas between tracks and in reality it really didn't matter, did it Greg? No, there were only sidings where, you know, wagons and that that weren't in use were, were, uh, were stored until their next tour of duty. We're just going to add a little bit of ground foam on top of this ridge here just to freshen it up a little bit because uh, since the layout was first built you know just through the uh, the UV light and that it tends to fade it out a little bit so there's no need to take off what was there you just add on over the top of it and uh, scenery is always good when you build it up in layers we'll spread the glue out and then we'll Sprinkle a bit on. Okay, we're just 
putting on the grand fine. do is we might also try and just get a little bit of static grass on top of here and see how that goes. And around here we put a bit of static grass. This is just the first stage. We need to go back over this when it dries and I'll probably use some spray adhesive. I spray that over the top and I'll probably put another layer of shorter static grass over the top of that. This on the top here, this is just the foundation layer. We're going to put some very short static grass on here, probably just a two or three mil, no longer than that, so that uh, that will lay up a lot better on this narrow ridge rather than what a long grass fibre will do. Okay, and what we've done here is this inside line, um, the curve was way too tight. So Dallas has ripped that up. Uh, he's eased it out a little bit. We've got a little bit of transition curve coming in here. Um, there was all ballast there before, but we put some very fine gray uh, dirt in that area there. We'll probably go back at some stage and we'll do a little bit of static grass when all that dries. A little bit more like this color here, which is a very short two millimeter, very dry, barren, like it hasn't been, uh, you know, it hasn't got its fair share of water. Okay, now over here we've been able to source some more um, stacks of timber. Um, some of it's real timber, some of it's plastic, but I think it all works together well. We were even fortunate we picked up these roof trusses. So uh, Rockville Building Supply is uh, gradually expanding its product line. And now that the yard is full, despite COVID, uh, short supplies and the like is looking much more like a timber yard and I think the effect is quite smart. Okay, well one of the things that we really set out to do uh, is a project that's been going now for about six months is to integrate this layout scenery wise so that it blends in perfectly with the rest of the layout the work we've done. One important thing that we did down here uh, at the time the original layout was built it was made up of generic buildings and what I mean by that they were a mixture of English American, you know, whatever was to hand, which is fine. But what we did, we removed anything that was not Australian. We've taken it off the layout and the difference it made is quite spectacular. In fact, when you look at it now, you would swear that it was any country New South Wales town. There's nothing in there that jars or screams that it's an English building or an American building. Okay, now one important thing to remember is really a layout no matter how good it is it's never really finished because as your modeling uh, skills develop you'll go back and you'll see something you did once before you were happy with it back there but you think okay i can do better than this now don't be afraid to go over what you've done replace a building uh, do some extra work on the scenery bring it up to the new uh, standards that you've been able to develop because you've been at modeling for a while and, you know, nobody is a perfect modeler in every sense of the word. You know, we're always learning, we're always developing our skills. And, you know, the good layouts develop over a period of time. There's not many people that can just set through and nail it on the very first attempt. So don't be put off, you know, if you think, oh, well, this is not quite so good, go back, redo it. You know, it's only the cost of a bit of scenery in your time, and at the end of the day, it's not a lot of money.